We sacrifice not because we have to. We bleed not because we want to. We fight because we need to. And sometimes we die because we love this country. I believe in American exceptionalism. As a Navy SEAL, I fought so that I would never have to see my president bow to anyone. Uh, I would direct that that uh, chart be taken down. Uh, upon further reflection, although commercially available in this hearing room, we are not going to point out uh, details of what may still, in fact, be a, uh, a facility of the United States Government or more facilities. So uh, you may continue. Uh, I, I respect your right to deliver what you want, uh, but I will caution once again, Ambassador, that that which is told to us on a classified basis needs to remain that way. You can't have it one, one day, a classified briefing, which I attended yesterday, and then the same, substantially same material be presented unclassified the next day. The ambassador is recognized. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Chairman Issa, Ranking Member Cummings, distinguished members of the committee, I would like to share a few words with you. Quote, Libyans face significant challenges as they make the transition from an oppressive dictatorship to a stable and prosperous democracy. But it is clearly in the U.S. interest and it will be an extraordinary honor to represent the United States during this historic period of transition in Libya. Those were Ambassador Stevens' words at his confirmation hearing. And they help us understand why he went to Libya, his passion for the country, its people, and the mission. He believed that no challenge was too big or too hard if our national security interest and our values were at stake. And that is what is at stake in Libya. At your request, in the spirit of cooperation, we are here today to do our best to answer your questions. But I ask you to understand that we do not yet know all the answers or results of ongoing reviews. And there may be, as the Chairman has noted, information that is classified and can only be dealt with in classified session. As Secretary Clinton has said, the American people, especially the families who lost loved ones, deserve a full and accurate accounting. We at the State Department are determined to get this right, and nobody will hold us more accountable than we hold ourselves. We lost friends and colleagues, a cross-section of those who put their lives on the line every day. In the inherently dangerous work of diplomatic service to our nation, the Secretary has already appointed an accountability review board and has begun working to determine whether our security systems and procedures were appropriate in light of the threat environment, whether they were properly implemented, as well as any lessons that may impact our work around the world. The Secretary has asked it to work as quickly and transparently as possible without sacrificing diligence and accuracy. This is a complicated review that will take time as we will learn more about what happened, and thus we are better able to assess the information we have. Until then, it is an incomplete picture, and as a result, our answers today will also be incomplete. No one in the administration has claimed to know for certain all the answers. We have always made clear that we are giving the best information we have at the time, and that information has evolved. For example, if any administration official, including any career official, were on television on Sunday, September 16th, they would have said what Ambassador Rice said. The information she had at that point from the intelligence community is the same that I had at that point. Clearly, we know more about today than what we did on September after the Sunday, September 16th after the attack. But we will continue consulting with you throughout this process. I would like to address a broader question that may be on your minds. Why is the United States in Benghazi when there are real dangers there? This question does go to the heart of what we do at the State, for the State Department and America's role in the world. Ambassador Stevens arrived in Benghazi during the height of the revolution. The city was at the heart of the opposition to Colonel Gaddafi, and the rebels there were fighting for their lives. It was dangerous. A bomb exploded in the parking lot of his hotel. The transitional authorities struggled to provide basic security. Extremists thought to exploit their own agenda. But Chris understood that the State Department must operate in places where our military cannot or does not, there are no other boots on the ground, and where there are serious threats to our security. He understood that the new Libya was being born in Benghazi and was critical that we have an active presence there. 
That is why Ambassador Stevens stayed in Benghazi in those difficult days and returned as ambassador as the Libyans began their difficult transition to democracy. He knew his, his mission was vital to our interests and values and was an investment that would pay off in a strong partnership with the Free Libya. After the September 11 attack, the Libyan people showed how right he was. Thousands marched in the streets of Benghazi, mourning their fallen friend with signs saying, Chris Stevens was a friend to all Libyans. هاي درسوا لك انا اطلع منهم يا راجل السد They overran extremist bases. Civilians insisted that the militia disarm and support the new democracy. They confirm what Chris Stevens knew so well. The United States is better off because he went to Benghazi. We must review the security procedures in place and improve them, asking ourselves if our people had what they needed and how we can reduce the risk of this happening again. But one thing is not up for debate today or any other day. Those who risk their lives in the service of our country are heroes, and we must support them, particularly those who provide security in an unsecure environment. Diplomacy must be practiced in dangerous places. The United States sends people to more than 275 diplomatic posts. No other agency is asked to stretch so far. We do this because we have learned that when America is absent, especially from dangerous places, there are consequences, extremism takes root, our interests suffer, and our security is threatened. As the Secretary says, leadership means showing up. That is what we do. That is how we protect this country and sustain its global leadership. We can and we will reduce the risk to those who serve, but no one can eliminate it. Our facilities must be protected, but not all are fortresses. I want to be clear. We regularly assess risk and resource allocation, a process involving the considered judgments of experienced professionals on the ground and in Washington using the best available information. The assault that occurred on the evening of September 17, however, was an unprecedented assault by dozens of heavily armed men. We must continue deploying our diplomats and development professionals to dangerous places like Benghazi. There is no alternative. As the Secretary has said, we will not retreat, we will keep leading, and we will stay engaged everywhere in the world. All of us in the State Department will honor our fallen colleagues by continuing their work with the same purpose and resolve they demonstrated. Mr. Chairman, thank you again for this opportunity. The Congress is a crucial partner in providing diplomatic security, so I look forward to working with you and the members of this committee to continue providing America's diplomats with the support and resources needed to carry out their important work. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ambassador Kennedy, uh, yesterday you made a uh uh, a significant press announcement. Uh, I want to ask you a couple of questions. This morning, and only this morning, we were shown, our staff was shown a, a, a book, uh, a binder in camera. The documents in that book all indicate unclassified. Are you prepared to deliver those uh, documents to us at this time? Uh, Mr. Chairman, my understanding is that we did make information available to the committee both last night and this morning, and we have that material still here. We would be glad to meet with the, with the committee or committee staff afterwards. Uh, no, we want it for this hearing. Uh, the information, when looked at in camera, was unclassified, but in fact perhaps embarrassing. Will you make that information available at this time so I can circulate it to all the members on the dais? Mr. Chairman, the information, while individual pieces may be unclassified, the totality of the information is such that it, that it must be considered in, to be restricted and the context is all important. I agree with you. And with that, I now move 
that the unclassified document of uh, September 11, 2012, appearing above the signature of the Ambassador be placed in the record. Without objection so ordered, the staff will uh, distribute it. Give me the additional ones. Additionally, I move that, oops, that's September 11th again. I move that the document of March 28, 2012, be placed in the record without objection, so ordered. Additionally, and these will have to be printed, the document of August 2, 2012, from the Ambassador or, and of July 9, 2012, be placed in the record. What objection? So ordered. Mr. Chairman? Yes? Just so that we will be clear. You already have the documents? I just want to be clear. That's all. In real time, a whistleblower has provided us with some of these documents. We, uh, we confirm that these documents are similar to the documents being, or identical to the documents being withheld. It is the determination of the Chair that these documents were responsive, unclassified, and appropriate for discovery. Mr. Chairman, and I was just asking if you already had the documents. Uh, well, if you will notice, I am looking at one on an yeah. iPad. You already have them. Okay. I just, that is all I ask. Now, we do have them uh, and, and others. So they will be circulated. To both sides? To both sides, of Thank course. Thank you. They are now documents of this hearing and of this. And before I, I do my opening statement, or my, before I do my questioning, Ambassador, I don't like doing this. But ultimately, the cooperation we received has caused individuals to say things which are consistent with these documents which are being withheld. And since the documents are unclassified, we can reach no other conclusion but that they are inappropriate. And quite frankly, after my years in the military and my years on the Hill and my years on the Select Intelligence Committee, to, to say that a broad array of unclassified documents somehow in totality makes classified is to make everything you do unavailable to the Congress. With that, we will begin the clock.